it's time to run through 10 science fiction movies you've probably never seen. I think these are pretty good to great science fiction movies that never show up on the top 10 hundred list of greatest science fiction movies ever. But I think these 10 are worthy of breaking into those lists. And some of you, maybe all of you, will like some of these movies. So let's run through my top 10 unknown science fiction movies coming up next. <laughs> So I'm a science fiction aficionado of sorts. Should I declare that? I don't know. I teach a science fiction class. I like to read it. I've tried to see just about every major science fiction release ever made. That's impossible to do. But I think I've collected 10 movies for you to go through and see if you like any of them and let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say, plus what you think I'm missing from this list. Coming up at number 10, my subscribers and viewers led me to this movie and I didn't know it existed, but I watched it. I was actually pretty intrigued by it. It's the Spanish time travel movie, Time Crimes. Time Crimes is sort of like Shane Carruth's primer in that it's very simple. There is just a basic idea of a science fiction time travel machine, like a box. You have no explanation for it. And an ordinary guy goes into it and goes into the past. Now he's a voyeur. And this movie takes place over a very short space, just a tiny little sort of countryside home with another couple locations nearby. And this guy ends up going back in time two, three, four times and creates different versions of himself. It's a very interesting movie in terms of psychology. The split self, the fragmented self, this guy who goes back in time, there are multiple selves here as because of the time loops, is sort of at war with himself and talks about himself in the third person. So I think for, if you're interested in psychology, this would be a good movie to watch as well. It's just a pretty good time travel movie overall. My number nine movie is a 1980s movie you may not have heard of, but it, it was created and directed by the great Douglas Trumbull, who did the special effects for 2001 and a number of other movies. Here he directed a movie called Brainstorm. Brainstorm is okay in places, great in others. It's got an interesting idea, which is a virtual reality device that records your thoughts, your brain waves and whatever, and then someone can put on VR goggles and relive that experience exactly as it was. So in the movie, you get scientists develop this technology and then the various applications of this technology, and you can just imagine what would happen. Pornography is one of them. And also then an event where someone has the recording device on and then they die. Well, what would happen if you were to relive someone dying uh, that's a very interesting idea, and so Brainwave shows it. There's some good effects here. There's some bad performances. This is just a weird movie overall in terms of the acting. Christopher Walken's in it, so though, so maybe that's going to sell you on it. But Brainstorm, not a bad movie. My number eight is an unheralded 1970s movie. In fact, go to the description below. I went through all kinds of 1970s science fiction movies, most of them before Star Wars, so they're all different and sort of weird. This movie caught my eye because of its premise and the way that it's done. It's deliberately trying to be wacky. It's the movie God Told Me To. It's sort of a schlocky movie, God Told Me To. It's about an investigator who tries to figure out why these people are going around and, and becoming terrorists and they claim that God told me to. But we're not talking about God here, we are, are talking about aliens. And this investigator gets interested and he even meets the alien who's doing the thing at one point. I won't tell you any more than that, but this movie is one of those science fiction movies and there are tons of them actually, where religion and science, they're not separated, they are combined here. So I think the Catholicism in this movie is very interesting, the use of it, God told me to, it's worth seeking out. My number seven is a David Cronenberg movie. And you know, David Cronenberg did The Fly, he did Videodrome, but this one has been ignored, I think, mostly. It's the movie Existence. That's Existence with a Z. This is a typical Cronenberg movie, a slow burn, very interested in bodily orifices and technology that interfaces with those orifices, including a brand new one that shows up on these people's bodies. This is a, a movie that comes straight out of Phil K. Dick's over. It comes from the 1990s as well, so there's a lot of paranoia, reality, and virtual reality, the question of what is real in this movie. And I think you're gonna like this movie if you like, say, I don't know, 12 Monkeys or The Matrix. It's much slower than those movies though, and yet it's in that vein. 
and I sort of like the simulation within the simulation stuff that the Matrix has. So this one sort of has that too. Existence, check it out. My number six is a kid's movie directed by John Favreau, his first movie that he ever directed way before Iron Man or his other stuff. This one is Zathura. This is just a fun movie, okay? <laughs> I don't have any sort of other analysis about it that kids go in a house and they go into space. And I have no doubt that John Favreau he liked the movie Explorers and other kinds of 1980s movies. I'm sure he loves Star Wars. There's no doubt about it. Movies like that from the 70s and 80s, then he sorts of remake those in a different sort of way. There's a spin on it with Zathura. And it's just a fun. Kids go into space in a house. What, could, <laughs> what couldn't you like about that? My number five movie comes from subscribers too. And I'm very grateful for them and the recommendations. So please recommend more down at the bottom. This is a Russian movie you can find in HD on YouTube for free. So go seek it out if this description interests you. It's Ken Zadza. All right, I don't really know how to say that, but Ken Zadza is just a weird movie. It's like you take Tarkovsky's Stalker and you combine it with Mad Max. And I don't know what else. It's, it's very strange. And it's supposed to be goofy, sort of dark or subtle humor. And it's Russian humor. So, of course, it's dark. But it's about two guys who go into a different world or galaxy and they just show up there and it's a desert planet without water and they meet lots of weird people. Sort of an adventure movie, except you can definitely get the vibe that this is late Soviet Union uh, era. The Russians are sort of collapsing at this point and this makes fun of all kinds of things like you just can't get goods and services that you need, basic goods and services. I would say watch this movie if you have a weird sense of humor or if you want some kind of different experience because this is not like a Hollywood science fiction movie at all. I kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty interesting and I should probably watch it again. So Ken Zaza. My number four, I don't know if I should put this at number four, but for me personally, I thought this idea in this movie and somewhat of the execution of it was really good. It's the 1970s sort of horror science fiction movie, Demon Seed. Demon Seed is a typical movie now. It's about an artificial intelligence computer that gets becomes conscious, that becomes ultra intelligent, and it takes over a house. The house of the scientist is sort of in charge of the thing, and his wife is in the house, and the computer, the AI, traps his wife in the house. The entire house is run uh, by a computer system that the humans can use, but then the AI takes it over. And so the AI is able to trap this woman. And then it's a horror movie where the computer sort of tortures her and you know keeps her as a victim and kidnaps her and so on. But what I love about great, pretty good, interesting science fiction movies is they always have a wild third act, something that you would never have dreamed of at the start or 20 minutes into the movie. This movie has a wild third act, which I'm not gonna give away. But what the computer wants to do to the woman is is <laughs> is funny to me on retrospect, but is horrifying. And it's a really interesting take on human computer relationships, cyborgs, and so on. So Demon Seed, it's worth a try for some of you. My third movie, my number three, is one I've already covered on this channel. It's one I just am in love with because I love its sort of dumb future that it portrays. It's Mike Judge's Idiocracy. I love the idea of a dumb future, a future that's not either high tech or bleak or post-apocalyptic, but it just, it continues on in the same ways that we're going, except it's kind of slightly worse. <laughs> so idiocracy is that. It makes fun of a number of modern day cultural phenomenon. It makes fun of the US presidency in great ways. <laughs> that's one, one reason I love this movie. And take a look at my video about it. That's all I need to say about Idiocracy, one of my favorites. My number two movie here is one I don't know what to do with, but I found it an interesting puzzle, very interesting editing and visuals and sounds in particular. This is the second movie from the indie movie maker, Shane Carruth, whose primer is well worth watching, but that shows up on all kinds of science fiction lists. This one doesn't so much, Upstream Color. Upstream Color will be much harder for a lot of you to watch. It's not as engaging as Primer. It's not as simple as Primer. And it takes a lot of effort to sort of figure out what's going on in this movie. It's modernistic. It's deliberately obtuse. I like the aspect of putting the puzzle together, trying to figure out what's going on in all various things, including asking what in the world is Henry David Thoreau doing in this movie. 
Uh, but I find this movie maybe not as great as a lot of people would claim who are in love with it, but also it's worth a shot. And I'm putting it up here at number two because I doubt my own opinion. I think it's probably better than what I think. So try it out and see. Very interesting movie, Upstream Color. Now my number one movie I think is legitimately great. I'm arguing against the mainstream. Most people miss this movie because of the timing, how it came out, and then the reviews, which I think there are a lot of critics who are just not very good critics anymore. So this movie by Terry Gilliam from the mid 2010s, very well written screenplay, one of the best houses in movie history, in my opinion, The Zero Theorem. Now what makes The Zero Theorem hard to watch is that Christoph Waltz's performance is weird. He talks in the third person, he is named after the writer of Ecclesiastes. He's an introvert. He doesn't like people, sort of. And he's got this weird mission in life. He's waiting for a phone call where someone's going to tell him the meaning of his life. And so, you know, you watch this movie and you might be off put by something about it. But I love the world in this movie. I love the visuals in it. I love the house. And I think what this movie is getting at, the, the emptiness of modern life, the emptiness of atheism, period, the need for belief and meaning, the longing for that. Um, these are all here in very interesting ways. The church itself is a great place to host this movie. And I like the characters, and I just think they're really interesting. So take a watch of The Zero Theorem. Let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear if you think I'm just wrong, but this is definitely number one for me. I think this is a great movie overall. Is there anything I missed that you would put in this video? I know there's many international movies I have not seen, science fiction movies, so I'd love to hear your recommendations. And let me know what your top 10 list is. What would you say the top 10 unknown science fiction movies are? Please subscribe to this channel for more great movie content. Thank you. Have a great day.